What's up, all you beautiful people? Welcome back to the podcast. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the seven books that will make you mentally resilient, or the books that I found to be the most impactful on my journey of trying to develop this mental resilience, this inner fortitude, this grit, this stoicism that will serve you incredibly well on your journey of becoming a successful entrepreneur. You have to be able to manage your emotions and your your mindset, the uh, the beliefs that you're allowing into you, the, the garden of your mind. You must stand ready at the door, at the gate of your mind, and these books will allow you, will help you, will enable you to do just that. So let's, grab it. let's dive right into it. Number one is a book that I read very recently, last couple of months. It was fantastic. It's been re- recommended to me many, many, many times over the years, and I had read other books by this gentleman, but I'd never read this one. It's by Donald Miller, and it's called A Million Miles in a Thousand Years. It's a book about an author who wrote a book, and now they want to, it was a memoir about his life, and now they want to turn that into a movie. But as they're turning his life into a movie, he comes to realize that his life isn't very interesting. It's because he hasn't been living it by design. And the the central theme of this book is that our lives are our story. And we get to craft that story with intention. And when the bad things happen to us in life, that's a good thing because that makes for a more dramatic story. It gives us as the hero the opportunity to persevere, to strive, to overcome, to per- perhaps fail, right? And looking at life through that lens of how am I living a great story? Is my life a story worth reading about, about hearing about? It doesn't have to be in the context of like what other people think about it. It's for yourself. Having those great defining stories of your life that you go, I'm glad I did that. I'm glad I lived something memorable. I did these memorable things. I tried these hard things and in doing so I failed many, many times, but occasionally I got very close to glory or sometimes I even got it. I love this book. It's so well written too. It's beautiful. A Million Miles in a Thousand Years by Donald Miller. Number two, another uh, another beautiful book read very recently in the last year called Tuesdays with Maury. So our dog passed away. We put her down about a month ago and she, we had an extra two months with her from the time that we, we learned that she was, you know, fading. And, uh, during that time I read a lot about death and because I, I had never really struggled or had something really close to me that I cared about and love truly deeply felt my heart die. And so I was reading a lot, trying to understand the emotions that I was feeling, trying to make sense of it. You know, it's very easy to understand death intellectually, but we, as individuals, we all believe that we are immortal. <laughs> we don't think that we're actually going to die, right? Like if you had to live with the truth and the reality of death looming over your head every day, like we just wouldn't really be able to function. So we do a very good job of blocking it out and putting it aside until it can't be ignored any longer. Tuesdays with Maury is the story of an old man, a teacher, a professor, and the young man that he had taught when he was in school. These two people coming together in the final days of Maury's life as Maury is sharing stories of his uh existence but also how he's approaching the end and the grace and um the 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 way that he did that um and it's a beautiful beautiful story that can transcend time you can take the lessons from this old man who is at the end of his road and you can take them ideally you're not at the end of your road you can start to implement them now and i think so much of life gets easier the problems and the magnitude of the problems that we face on a day-to-day basis they they shrink in comparison to death when we realize that uh it's coming for us all in the end and this is why the stoics are such a fan of memento mori which is to remember death to keep it in your mind at all times because it then paints everything that you do from day to day and moment to moment with more vibrancy more color and it allows you to live more fully fantastic book tuesdays with mori Third, another book about that, Breath When Bre- it's called When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Calanthe. This is a heartbreaking story, heartbreaking story. I could not recommend you read it more though. It's about this young gentleman, Paul, who is at the end of his neurosurgical residency. He's been, he's in his late thirties and he's dedicated his entire life to neurosurgery. It's a very demanding field. And he's just getting to the end of this career, ready to start this new life with his wife and have kids that they've been putting off and waiting until he finishes his his training. And he finds out that he has cancer and he has about a year or so left to live. And he writes this incredible book sharing as he's experiencing 
and wrestling with the meaning of life and these things, these questions and like the unfairness of it all, 37, 38 years old, have a kid on the way, like all these things. And when it comes to being mentally resilient, I think it helps to put our problems again into perspective by reading of the problems of others who've gone through so much more and come out the other side of it or not come out the other side of it. Because I don't think that we need to be mentally resilient doesn't mean that we just ignore the fact that it is very traumatic to be alive and that it's only going to have one end. We need to accept that, acknowledge that if we want to be able to live fully in this moment. This book is, is just absolutely beautiful. When Breath Becomes Air, highly recommended. Number four, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. This is a New York Times bestseller. Mark Manson um, absolutely crushed it with this book. Listen, the reason you're probably more anxious, more stressed out than um, than you need to be is because you're giving more fucks about things that just don't need to have any fucks given. That's the truth of it. So what is the subtle art of not giving a fuck? That's the, that's the secret. How do we go through life not letting world's problems become our problems not manifesting them and making them bigger than they need to be and just accepting that they are there and we need to deal with them and uh, letting it be that this is a great book very well written too brilliantly written number five is the tried and true classic you've heard about it before it's called think and grow rich by napoleon hill there's a lot of weird stuff in this book but there's a lot of really good stuff too and there's a reason that when you talk to a lot of successful people, they will quote this book as being very pivotal in their mindset and opening and expanding their worldviews. Um, highly recommend. If you haven't already gotten to this book and read it, you need to get on this. It's a very good book. Number six is Siddhartha um, by Herman Henry. This is the story of the Buddha. And it's very short. It's very easy to get through. But the, um, I like going to the old wisdom. So you got your Bible, you got your Quran, you got your Buddhist text, um, you got your Stoic uh, philosophies. I like going back to the things that are really old, tried and true, and learning from those. And because um, the the biggest problems that we face in life, most of the really trivial ones are the result of the modern world. You know, like scrolling social media, feeling isolated, uh, feeling uh, like feeling distracted, can't focus, all that stuff. Right? That's that's the result of the the things that are happening day to day in our lives. But the bigger questions of like, what's it mean to you know, not have control over our emotions or our focus, the ability to direct our um, our consciousness with intention or to be in a room full of people and still feel alone. Like these are the timeless questions that we all wrestle with. And so I like to go back to the very beginning and uh, read from the old farts who, who've been there, done that way before. So Siddhartha is a great story, um, a good parable for the, uh, of the, the Buddha, the Buddha story. And uh, this actually ties really well into, uh, into book number seven, which is also very old. It's called Letters from a Stoic by Seneca. So if you've listened to me for any number of minutes, you would know I can't make it through like any single day without mentioning my favorite book of all time, which is Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. I actually have a copy of it sitting right here on my table. And uh, that's a great book, no doubt. But there's another book that I think is actually just as good, um, but it's a little bit harder to consume. It's a little bit uh, chewier. It's called Letters from a Stoic by Seneca. Seneca is one of the godfathers of Stoicism. And in a lot of ways, this book is way better than Meditations. But I like the language and how Meditations is written. And I like the the backstop of the story, which is Marcus Aurelius, the most powerful man in the world, trying to wrestle with his own feelings of inadequacy and like, what's it mean to be a good person? So I, that's what those, those things compound to make Meditations my favorite book. But Letters from a Stoic, very close, number two. So those are seven books that will help you become more mentally resilient. I encourage you go pick up all of these and start working through them. It will pay massive dividends. I promise you. So I'm curious, what are some books that have made a massive impact on your life? What are the personal development books that uh, you would recommend bar none, hands down to anybody. And then said, this book will make your life better. What are those books? Shoot me a DM, leave me a comment, leave it in the reviews love to hear from you guys but until i do i will catch you on the next episode sad folks my friends